You got to hear what God is doing in your church. Uh, there's this movement, and you only have to be around for about a minute to understand that the potential for this new movement, it really is huge. In fact, we already see momentum in this new ministry that we're calling Communities. To me, it's freedom to be able to go out and ride. The motorcycle community is uh, for people in the church and also just people in the community. We just want to get together and have fun uh, learning each other becoming friends with each other. So I lead the uh, board game community group. Having the opportunity to make that a part of my church and find other people both at church and outside uh, the church interested in this and getting a group together uh, has kind of just been something I've always been interested in. I would say this community is about reaching out to, to people, the, the film lover in all of us. I love films. Uh, you know, there's so many different different genres out there and just getting the chance to, to meet up with some friends to watch movies and reach out to other people at the same time you know that also love movies it just sounds like a really uh, entertaining way to, to, to reach out to, to lost people in the community. So the Shoreline Hikers you know we're a group of people who just love to be outdoors sharing that experience with each other it's an experience when you're in a community that lasts and lasts you every time you see each other and you remind each other and you get a reminded again like here how it's just walking with God and God's children it's wonderful so there you have it but this really is just the tip of the iceberg there's so many other community groups for you to get involved in uh, and there are those that we haven't even established yet that I might not even know about but you're aware of you're passionate about let's launch it let's get it out in the community you got to email me though I'd love to buy you a cup of coffee and hear where your passion lies and how we can leverage that for the sake of the gospel Go on our website to see all the community groups that we have established or ones that are coming soon. And I'll see you out there in the community. We make the decision not just once, but over and over and over through our lifetime. Will I live and function in community with other people around me, connected to them, dealing with the joys and the challenges of human relationship, will I move towards community, or we make decisions that will move us away from community into a place of isolation, where we say, you know, I don't, you know I've been around people enough. I'm, I'm, people are tough, they're difficult, they're challenging, and so I'm just, honestly, I'm happy right here. It's by myself or with a very small, select group of people who are just like me or enough, at least agree with everything I think. And we can say, well, this, this, I, I, this is where I live. We, we can make that. Decision. There's things we decide and choices we make that move us toward community. And there's ways we live and choices we make that move us away from community into isolation. And, and I want to think together about this topic of community because the Bible is very clear that this is one of the things that really matters to God. And when you become a follower of Jesus, he moves you towards community towards connecting with other human beings, particularly within the body of Christ, other Christians. And he builds relationships and, and wants you to walk towards it. And yet still we have this tendency at times to move towards isolation. And a lot of that's because when we're in community with other people, can I be honest? It can be hard. It can be painful. Some of the most painful moments of my entire life have been moments where I'm connected with people, I get close to them, I open my heart, and they'll speak in a way, behave in a way, treat me in a way that's deeply painful. Am I the only one or does anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, that's, that's some of the most difficult, painful times in life are in community. Some of the most glorious, wonderful moments in life are in community also. But when times are difficult, we can start to push ourselves away and not toward God's community. But, but when you look at God's word, and if you have your Bibles, turn in the very beginning of the Bible, the first book of the Bible, first chapter of the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1. And as God is creating the heavens and the earth, and as God's creating people, we get this picture of community, both the divine community, God who exists eternally in community, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Has it ever struck you that the God of the universe exists eternally in community, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And then he creates us, people, for community. Listen to that in this passage. Genesis chapter 1, beginning in verse 26. Then God said... Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. Who's God talking to? He's talking to himself. 
Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's in divine community. So that they may rule over the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So God exists in eternal community, and God makes us people to function and to live in community. You start to get the picture. And yet we can move towards isolation. We can move away from community if we're not careful. And so one of the markers of spiritual growth that the Bible talks about, one of the ways you go, well, how do I know if I become a follower of Jesus, how do I know that I'm taking steps forward and I'm becoming more mature? Well, here's one of the ways. I'm moving more towards community and growing in community with God's people and with other people, and I'm moving away from isolation. That's a sign that we're growing spiritually. So as we do each week, I want to begin with the why. The question, why would I want to move towards community? Because we live in a world that's a very isolated world, and I think becoming more and more isolated. We're living, we live in more, a more polarized world where people aren't communicating and connecting very well. Why would I want to take the energy to move towards community? Well, here's some reasons. And I want to remind you again, if you're a note taker, all of these are on the website. Go on the Shoreline website. Go on today's sermon. And then just click on notes and you'll have everything on the screen already there for you. So don't try to, there's a lot of stuff. Don't try to write all these down. Just take note of the things that really hit you personally and write down things for your own life. But if you want all the notes, just download them after the service and you've got those available to you. Some of you caught on and you downloaded them before the service and you're just following along, which is nice. Um, so the why. Why would we want to engage in community within the family of God? First, because you were made for community and isolation was never God's design for his children. One of the reasons you want to move towards community is because this is the way God has designed you. And you say, well, no, not me. My personality, you know, my personality, I'm not just this one. I'm, I'm kind of this one, you know. <laughs> I, I'm, just fine. I'm just fine without you. I mean, you may say, that's my personality. Well, in, in Christ, some of the things that kind of are, are the way we're naturally wired, we become supernaturally changed. And there's people who, it doesn't mean that a quiet, introspective person is no longer quiet and introspective. They are. But there's something about community that God has made us and desired, designed us and hardwired us to be in fellowship with others, and we have to move towards what God has made us to be. Why would you want to engage in community? Because you have brothers and sisters, true spiritual family, and God wants you to get to know, God wants you to get to know them. You actually have family that God wants you to know that are right here at Shoreline, that are other local churches around our community, and all over the world. This is one of the amazing things about being a follower of Jesus. Is when the day you become a Christian, the moment you become a Christian, you have family all over the world. The family of God. This last week, Sherry and I were in Australia. I mean, literally the other side of the planet. And Sherry did a retreat, a conference for about 200 women in an area called Perth, which is on the far side of Australia. And Sherry came back from that conference. And I was on the other side of, uh, the other side of Australia. And so she came back. And for probably the next two or three hours after she landed... She just talked about all these women who are family to her. People she'd never met before. But when she met them, she said, this is my sister in, in Christ. This is family to me. And she just experienced that family love and care and that connection. Have you ever had that where you meet somebody who knows and loves Jesus and you just go, family. And you feel it. And I actually, last Sunday, and can I encourage you, when you're not here at Shoreline, when you're somewhere else traveling, go to church somewhere. I and mean, go online, look at their doctrine of belief and make sure that they believe in the Bible, believe in Jesus, make sure it's a Christian church. And then go, just go worship. So I did that last Sunday. And I do that when I travel. I try to go to church somewhere. And I actually, when, I, when my boys were growing up, I would go visit other churches. When I had occasionally got a Sunday off, I'd go visit other churches. And I'd always go like in my jeans and a wrinkled t-shirt and I wouldn't wash my hair. And I'd go real scruffy because I wanted to kind of walk in and look like I didn't belong, and just see, I, I want to feel what it feels like to walk into a church for the first time, not knowing how things work, and because I, I want to know if churches will really love and embrace people. And so I actually went out for a run, and I had my running clothes on, and I was sweating like crazy. So I went into church with a baseball cap, super sweaty, and just, and, and, and just you know, and my boys used to say, Dad, are you going to go spy on churches? I said, no, I'm not spying. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just going to visit churches and learn from them. But, um, so I walk into this little church, and it was right by the hotel we were staying, and, and uh, it was such a beautiful community. I met family there, about 60 people. Uh, the pastor's Tongan, and so there were a lot of Tongan and Samoan uh, Christians, and then some, some other paler-skinned people that were part of the congregation. But as I got there, I sat, kind of sat in the back row, and the worship was beautiful. There was, I think, six 
of these young people from like about 19 to 25 year olds and that led worship. And then this one guy probably in his 70s who played saxophone. And it was, it was beautiful. It was, and I just got to worship with God's people. Then they, they did what we do. They said, well, look, now greet those around you. But they take like about five or six or seven minutes. And there's only like 60 people. And I'm telling you, like 40 people greeted me in my sweaty running clothes. And nobody looked at me funny or strange. And I just like, yeah, that's, that's what we're supposed to be like. And I found out that I had family there. And I talked to the pastor afterwards and just had a great conversation. Talked to the worship leader. Family. Why do we move towards community? Because God has made us part of a family and he invites us into it. The why? Because we're stronger together. You are stronger in life and in faith if you stay in community with other Christians. And when you get isolated and pushed aside, I mean, you look at, like, you know, you look at foot, footage of African you know, wild animals trying to attack, a, and, and if they're going to attack, they want to get one off by itself, right? And, whoo, and then we're stronger when we're together as God's people. Why? Because true joy and fullness of life can only be realized in community with others. I, I believe that. Are you saying I can't have any fun and any joy when I'm by myself? No, that's not what I'm saying. But the deepest satisfaction and the deepest joys of life come when you're among God's people, worshiping, serving, following, sharing life, laughing together. There's something that God creates in that community that's so beautiful that you just can't find anywhere else. Why? How about this? Because you can't see your own back. You need people around you who watch your back. You, you need, it's a war out there. So you need to be back to back with people kind of protecting those. And you need people that will protect you if they see something coming at you or even see something in you that isn't good. They'll love you enough to say, I love you, but you know what? The way you treated that person, that wasn't right. Or I love you, but you know what? You gotta grow. You need somebody to watch your back and help you grow. You don't get that in isolation. You get that in community. And, and, and so why? There's a lot of good reasons to move toward Community. If you have your Bibles, look with me at Hebrews chapter 10. In this passage in Hebrews 10, uh, I want you, if you have your own Bible and if you have something to write with, if you're a note taker, if you take notes in your Bible, I'm a big note taker in my Bible, but if you take notes in your Bible, circle or underline everything in this passage I'm going to read that has kind of us or, or our or one another, this kind of community language that you'll see in Hebrews 10, beginning in verse 22. Here's the invitation for followers of Jesus. Let us... Draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And let us, and now listen closely, let us, Consider, ponder, think long and hard about how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Challenge each other, push each other, exhort each other to love and good deeds, to live more for Jesus. Verse 25, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Wow. There's a lot of us's and our and one another's in there. But what, what Hebrews is talking about is it's talking about this way of life that we understand, that, that we're made for community, that we exhort each other, we challenge each other. So, so the what, let's talk about the what of community. What can we see and measure that will help us discover if we're growing mature in community with God's family? I mean, how do I know I'm actually moving towards community and maturity in my walk with Jesus. How, how can I be sure of that? Well, here's some things that will kind of clarify it for you. If I actually make it a priority to be with other followers of Jesus, I mean, I mean, if I actually say it is a priority in my life to be with other Christians, I know I'm moving towards community. I, 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 it's important to me. It comes above other things. And, and you're here, and so I affirm you for that, but it's more than just church services. It's being with Christians in the walk of life. Do I move towards that? Do I gravitate towards that? They'll help me know if I'm growing in my faith. The what? What does it look like? How much do I invite God into my relationships with others? Do I really invite God into my relationships? When I am in community with other Christians, do I invite God in? Do I talk about spiritual things? We can talk about sports and the weather and the show we're watching, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with any of those things. 
But do we ever talk about what God's doing in our life, our spiritual growth, our journey with Jesus, what what we're learning from the word of God? Do we pray together when we're with other Christians? Someone shares a burden or a joy. Hey, can we pray about that together? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not that kind of Christian. I don't pray out loud with other Christians. Well, think about becoming that kind of Christian because that's kind of what Christians do. You know, we talk about Jesus. We pray together. Not every moment all the time, but that's part of our relational world. Serving together. Hey, how can we together serve the world and serve Jesus? Letting Christ come alive in your relational world. The what? What does it look like? Well, how much do I actually engage with people when I'm with them? You mean I can be with people in community and not be in community? Yes. You can be with people and not actually be with people. You know, we, we, we can get you know, tech distracted. We can get just anxiety distracted. We can get life distracted where we're with people. You, know, you can be with people and not be with them. How do I know I'm growing in community? That when I'm with people, I'm actually, you know, like looking at them, <laughs> you know, making eye contact, having, having relationship, talking with people, interacting. Being in the same space as people is not being in community with them. So, so to engage with people and say, am I actually, when I'm with people, am I with them? And I, am I present with them? The what? If I get close enough for others to bless me and also to bring me pain. How do I know I'm moving towards community? Because I'm starting to open up my heart to the people I'm with, the Christians I'm with, enough to where they could bring me joy but also pain. You, you know what it's like with your heart. When you're around somebody who's bristly and difficult and tough, you just kind of can go, boom, close the doors of your heart, right? And you just, boom, shut them out. I mean, I'm there, but you know, I just know how to protect myself from them. And then when you trust people and you have a relationship, you start to kind of open your heart up. And then there's some people that you really trust and really love where you go, okay, I can really open my heart. And then there's a handful of people in life you go, I can live like this with them, right? But it's those people you're closest with when your heart's open like this that can actually hurt you too. How do I know I'm moving into community? Because more and more I'm opening my heart to share real joy with people and also to risk real pain with people. I know there's some of you sitting in this room and some of you online and some of you in the family worship venue that'll say, hey, listen, I've been around Christians and I've been burned. And so I, I may come to church and I get out of here as quick as I can, but honestly, I live my life, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm over here. I'm on my own because I have been burned and I have been hurt and so I'm gonna live here. And I may pop in for church, pop in for a couple of things, but I'm keeping my heart closed and I'm staying away from community. And I, and I would tell you, if that's, if that's you, and I know there's people here that, that feel that way, I would say this. As a pa- I've been a pastor long enough, a Christian long enough, I could compare notes with you and compare scars of the depth of pain that I've experienced from people in the church. And it's been plenty and it's been deep. And I can also share with you the incredible joy I've experienced with God's people. I had a pastor who mentored me and some other kind of pastors to be, some people who were training to become pastors years ago. And this pastor had lots of different sayings that I, would just, that I just still carry in my heart and my mind. He was so wise. He had such great perspective. But one of his sayings, and I'll put it in my own words, kind of my own paraphrase. But he would tell us, this is before I became a pastor. He'd say, listen, when you become a pastor, you need to know something about the church. He says, so pay attention. So we're all listening. This is the older, wiser pastor guy. He says, let me tell you. He says, in the church, you will find the most healthy, beautiful, loving, kind people in all the world. He said, and in the church, you will find the most mean, nasty, difficult, pain-inflicting people you'll ever meet. And he said, and you'll find everything in between. And this is what this pastor said to us. He said, that's the way it's always been. That's the way it always will be. And then he said, that's the way it should be because we are the church and everyone's welcome. So if you're looking for a perfect pastor, keep looking. I'm not there. If you're looking for a perfect church, a perfect community group, or growth group, keep looking. We're we're broken people being redeemed by the grace of Jesus, forgiven by his death on the cross and his resurrection, being healed and restored, but we're not there yet. So when there's hurt and when there's pain, continue to pursue community even though it's difficult and open your heart big enough to where you can be both blessed and even have pain again, but learn what it is to walk within the community of God's people. What does it look like? How about this? If I partner with people in following and serving Jesus. Boy, I think we really discover what it is to be the church 
when we say, let's together be on mission. Let's together serve Jesus. And there's lots of ways to do that. But I want to challenge you to look at I know for me, the people I get closest to in the church are people I'm side by side in the trenches doing ministry with. Those are the people I get to know best. And then people be like, hey, can we hang out? Can I, I want to get to know you. It's like, yeah, let's go, do, let's go serve Jesus together. I mean, we'll get to know each other when we're on mission together, when we're finding ways to serve Jesus. And, and so you know, find that pathway. Look with me in Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, this is sort of the birth of the church, the beginning of the church, and we see this community that God is forming, and, and out of this time of prayer and gathering of people began this blossoming movement of the church. But in Acts chapter 1, looking at verse 12, we read these words. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were, and this is where usually when we read the Bible, we start skipping. Oh, yeah, names. Brrr, don't skip the names. I mean, community is about real people, right? So those present, you're, you're names, I mean, you're laughing. This is your name skippers, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, list of names. Zip. Oh, I read that whole part really quickly. Uh, those present were Peter, John, James, three of the guys that were closest to Jesus, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. People gathered together to pray, to seek God. And out of this prayer meeting and out of this gathering, God sent the Holy Spirit and began to birth a new thing called the church. But there was a sense of community, connectedness. So the where and the when. Pictures of people who are learning to live in community that honors God and blesses others and ourselves. What, what does it look like if you say, okay so, okay, so God made me for community. God wants me to be in community. I'm, all of us, I think, at times are tempted to move towards isolation, to pull away. You know, how do I move towards community? What, how do I start stepping toward that more? Well, here's some things. And just kind of quickly, here's some thoughts. Being in a growth group that prays, shares life, learns together, and grows in faith. You know, jump into a growth group. Today we've got our growth group table out here right by the Connections Cafe. And some of you go, oh, I've heard about growth groups. That's not my thing. But all, all a growth group really is, is a group of people who consistently as a group gather once a week, once every two weeks, once a month. There's different groups meet different times. And they gather to read the Bible, to pray, to talk about life, to encourage each other. It's a great thing to be engaged in. Some of you today when the service is done are saying, I've kind of avoided connecting closely with people, but I still, but something in me wants to be connected. Go look at, go just go by and say, how do I learn more about community groups? And just learn about it and explore that and see if you can find a group that you can fit into and be part of. Serving with others and being on a Jesus mission together. And I think of this morning, I prayed this morning at eight o'clock like we do every Sunday morning with the worship team and the tech team and all those folks together in the hallway over here on the right. And, and they were talking about the fact that we're not just a group that leaves. I mean, they get here early Sunday mornings, and they're here until after the third service, and they're singing, and they're helping you worship Jesus, and they're giving him glory, but also they're becoming a community. You serve in middle school or high school ministry. You'll become a community with those, with those kids and with the other volunteers. You serve in our hospitality team and preparing the food. They are a community. You serve in children's ministry. There's a community there, and a community outreach. There's all these different ways to be a part of community. And so engage in serving. Sharing meals, fun conversations in life with others. Just get together with people and share a meal. The Bible is full of examples of people meeting over a meal. And there's something about that meal and just sharing life that binds hearts together. Inviting people into your home, your heart, and your life. Hospitality. Actually, opening your home. You know, this, this used to happen in churches. This used to happen in churches. Somebody would show up for the first time in a church, and they'd visit on a Sunday morning. And before they left that church, somebody said, hey, listen. We made some extra food today. Do you want to come over to our house for lunch? We'd love to have you over to our house for lunch. And today we go, wait a minute, no background check? What if they're a serial killer? We're like, oh, we're, we're paranoid. We're like, no, I wouldn't just, I don't even know you. I haven't even vetted you. I haven't even, you know, stalked you online. Um, and so we're like, you know, we get all, you know, we're all wound up. People used to like come to church and go, hey, do you want to come over to our house for lunch? Sure. And the next time they come to church, they have friends. You know, just open your heart, open your home, open your lives. Hang out a little bit. Make space for that. Engaging in a community group that gathers to share common interests and connections on a regular basis. You go, what? You know, I saw the video, but I'm still trying to put this whole, this, the community group thing is a little bit new for us. I just wish we had somebody really enthusiastic and energetic with cool hair to talk about this. <laughs> hey, Nate Tibbs, share a few things. <laughs> Shoot. 
Hey, I celebrate the fact that, that we, we're the church and that we get to, to be a part of a church that is serious about doing what God calls us to do, about being the church that God calls us to be. And so we have a vision, we have a mission statement that says that we want to help as many people as possible, there's community, become fully, totally committed to Jesus Christ. In my words, the way I put that is <laughs> we want people to belong before they believe. There really is a sense of belonging, that when you come here, you're family. It's better than Olive Garden, right? When you're here, you're family. Like, that we, we, we're brothers and sisters, and whether you believe or not, that you're welcome here, where you can belong before you believe. That's exactly what Jesus did. Read the gospel, study his life. He did that so well, among other things. What are community groups? An effort to do that to cultivate events, environments, gatherings where people can belong, whether they believe or not. And those that do believe that we can do what Kevin's talking about, experience community, experience life together, whether it's through basketball or knitting or a board games group, that we have shared interests, common interests. Shoreline's a big church. How do you get to know other people in your church? Uh, by coming here, absolutely, get involved in the growth, but sometimes it's just going out and doing stuff. We live in a beautiful, beautiful area, so we should be out there enjoying God's creation. We got a hiking group that does that. We got a, we got a basketball. We even have a community group that Christians aren't allowed to be a part of unless you're trained because it's a discussion group to talk about life's big questions for those that don't, be, don't believe. Why? Because we want them to belong. I guess the best way that I can put it, what are community groups? They're kind of like Shrek. You know that movie Shrek about the big green ogre? And he befriended a donkey, a donkey, right? And the donkey, the donkey is afraid of Shrek because he's big and grizzly and all that. And, and Shrek is like, ogres are like onions. We got layers, <laughs> right? Community groups, there's layers. Thank you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where's the Grammy? Um, there are layers to community groups. At first, it, for, for Christians, it's all about fellowship. It's all about connection, that you can get involved in something that you have a common shared interest with and get to know other believers. But it is not just that. Another layer for that is that it's outreach. It's an opportunity for you to invite your neighbor, your coworker, your friend that might not be comfortable coming into a Bible study or even a church service, but they'll go hoop with you. They'll, they'll go for a beach walk with you. And then there's a sense of belonging, that you bring the gospel you allow the Holy Spirit who anointed your heart and given you vision that you care passionately for them to come to know Jesus through that shared experience. May we be a church that is all about that, connecting with one another for the sake of God's love, but connecting with those that don't feel like they belong. Why? So that they can believe in the one true God. Amen. All right. Amen. Yeah. So in the book of Romans, the apostle Paul uh, writes these words. So in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. And part of us is like, whoa, I don't know if I want to belong to all the others. But that's not really an option. That's, he's just saying that's what it is. When you become part of the family of God, you are part of the family of God. And, and so embrace that and receive that. So kind of rapid fire, you say, okay, well, okay, I'm getting it, I'm starting to see it, I want to move away from isolation, because the thing about isolation is isolation begats isolation, which gives birth to isolation, which leads us to more isolation, and eventually, we're like over in the shadows, you know, we're like, why do I feel so alone? Well, we keep isolating it, and yet community builds community, which builds community, they, they, it builds on itself, and so how do I move towards community? Here's just some ideas. How about this? Greet one new person each time you come to church. So make it a point before you leave, just identify one person that you don't know and say, hey, I want to just go say hi. So that's weird, that's creepy. No, that's just be in the church. Be friendly, be warm. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it in this service, but when, I, when they had the greeting time at this little church in, uh, in Malulaba in Australia, uh, they greeted for like five or six minutes and over half the congregation greeted me. Sweaty as I was, and they were wonderful. Greet, greet, just greet one new person. Join a growth group or lead a growth group. You know, say, I want to be, learn more about growth. I want to lead a growth group. Uh, join, uh, join a community group or start and lead a community group. Passionate series. If you say, well, I'm thinking about, you know, do we have a, knit, do we have a knitting community group yet? Quilting? Okay, there's two. Just, that's just off the top of my head. I'm not even trying. I'm just an idea machine. Uh, but, uh, but, 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 you know, somebody, somebody said, I'd love to do that. Then just call Passionate and he'll sit and talk with you, pray with you, dream with you, and say, is there something God's doing here? 
But we'd love to see that list you saw on that middle screen there. We'd love to see 40, 50, 60, 70 different community groups going on. At Shul- and we have kind of leaders for the different areas. And, we'll, and he'll help acquaint, uh, equip and train you and get you ready to do that. So, you know, start one. Uh, become part of a service team. Find a place of ministry in the church where you're serving alongside of other people and you will find community. Uh, linger, connect, ask questions, make friends. Uh, when you're together at something like this or anything happening at Shoreline, just build in an extra 10 minutes or five minutes and just linger, hang out. So one of the things I love about nights of worship, there's people here half an hour after night of worship's over, talking, sharing, praying, encouraging each other, sharing refreshments, hanging out. There's something wonderful about that. And who will you become? What will happen in you if you, if you move towards community, if you grow in community, what will happen in you? Who will you become? You'll discover the health of deep human connections and you'll avoid the pain of loneliness, of aloneness. As you move towards community, you're gonna find there's something wonderful and beautiful. Are there difficult people? Yes. Will it be painful at times? Yes. Can I promise you if you, if you open yourself to community, you'll never be hurt? No. I can promise you that you probably will be sometimes because we're human beings still being shaped by Jesus. But I can also promise you that you'll have great grace and joy and a sense of God's presence in your life in a way that you won't have when you're isolated. The who, what will happen to you? You'll invest in the lives of others and help them experience God's gift of relationship. We move to community not just for ourselves, but God uses us to bless other people and help them know that they're part of a family and that they're loved. And we watch their back and we encourage them and we spur them on. The who will you become? You'll create an environment where people can belong and meet Jesus. You'll create a space where people can say, I I have a home. I can't tell you how many people through the years have been part of Shoreline. Someone told me just this morning, as a matter of fact, same thing, that someone's come to Shoreline and said, well, I moved to the area, I came through the military, and I was going to visit five or six or seven churches, but I walked into Shoreline, and I just felt like this is my home. I felt embraced and welcomed. I hope that that feeling is for every person who walks in here, but we can create that kind of environment. You will become stronger and more confident in all of life. I think the stronger you are in community within the body of Christ, within the church, it makes you stronger in life as a whole. Because you have this this sort of strength of being part of a family and knowing you belong and you have a home. And then you will bring glory to Jesus and show his presence to the world. You you will, because Jesus made you for community, because he delights in you being a part of community, when you move towards this, it brings joy to the heart of Jesus. He celebrates that beauty. And so as we close, I'm gonna read a passage from John chapter 13. And And this passage is just, um, uh, just a beautiful picture of, of, of community, of God's presence. It's John 13, verse 34. And in John 13, 34, Jesus has washed the disciples' feet. It's the Last Supper. He's washed the disciples' feet. He's broken the bread. He's poured out the cup. He's served communion. And he's sitting with his followers before he goes to the cross. So he's sitting in community. And Jesus says this, a new command I give you, Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. You want to challenge? Love people in community the way Jesus loves you. That's a challenge. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. The world will know that you're his follower by how we love each other. That's a testimony to the world. Let's pray together right now. Let's just pray. And we're going to just pray, and then we're going to sing a song of response as we close our service. But Lord, we pray right now that you would help us understand at a deeper level what it is to be in community with you. That we will know your love so deeply and so personally that we know what it looks like to share that love with others. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will take us to a new place of community that we've never gone before. And Lord, we confess that all of us have been hurt at different times in different ways and we can pull back away, we can recoil from community, but we don't want to live there. We don't want to move towards isolation. We want to move towards fellowship and community being part of your church. So Lord Jesus, as we right now respond with a simple song of praise, will you hear our prayer and hear our hearts and give us the strength and courage to walk into and move towards community. We pray this for your glory, Jesus.